How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our next VM topic, which is going to be taking the clone that or the template that we created from a VM in the previous video, and we're going to deploy a new virtual machine from that template. Pretty easy to do. Let's go ahead and take a look what that looks like. All right, so we're here on our desktop. What I'm gonna go ahead and do from here is I'm going to click on this template and I can right click on it and I can say new VM from this template if I want to. That's an option if I wanted to use that. Or I can go back over here to my, my data center. I can right click here and say new virtual machine. And then I can say deploy from template. Click on that, click next, and then choose a template from the data center. And if I I don't have a content library yet, we'll talk about that later. But if I was to expand compute, we have this template sitting right there. I'm gonna click next. It says, what do you want the name and to name this VM? It's gonna be called Linux-2. We're gonna put it in the compute data center. Click next. It's gonna ask us which host do you want to put it on. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on host three. And what we're gonna do as we move forward with this setup, let me take a go back, jump back over to the camera real quick. What we're gonna basically do as we move forward is we're gonna, we've taken a look at converting a VM to a template and now we're going to deploy a template or a VM from this template. So we're gonna use it for its automation capability. What we're gonna do in follow-on videos is we're going to take this environment to the next level by turning on what they call a cluster and turning on capabilities known as DRS, Distributed Resource Scheduler. We're going to take a look at high availability between our ESXi hosts and how all of that type of stuff will work. The cool thing about this is when we turn DRS on and we have HA turned on and things like that, what'll end up happening is when we go to deploy a new VM and you turn DRS on, this need to pick which host you're going to deploy that VM on goes away. You can turn DRS to be fully automated, so it'll just pick whatever host happens to be least utilized at that point in time. So pretty cool stuff. Let's go back over to the desktop and talk about the rest of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip back over here. All right, so I'm gonna choose host three. I'm gonna click next. And it's gonna ask, well, where do you wanna install this? I'm gonna pick the SAN data store. And from the drop down, I'm going to say thin provision. Even though it's probably already there, it's just one of those things where it's just easier to click on it since it's right there. I'll click on next. And I'm going to, I have the option of customizing the operating system. If I wanna do that, I can customize this virtual machine's hardware if I wanna do that, or I can just turn the VM on. I'm just gonna click on next to finish this off and go from there. Click finish, and now we're going to deploy a new VM from that template. So this will take a little bit of time to go ahead and deploy. It's gonna hang out here for a little bit. And now we can see Linux 2 is there. Now if we were to click on this guy, for example, we're gonna be redirected to this guy. There's gonna be some stuff missing from it. Number one that's gonna be missing is a lot of the configured information, CPU, memory, all that type of stuff. You might say, well, how come it's missing? Well, the first and foremost, the reason why it's missing is because guess what? The VM is not deployed yet. So we're gonna basically pause the video while this process is happening. This will take a little bit of time and then we will move into other topics as we go along. But this is the first thing that we wanted to make sure that we understood is deploying a virtual machine from a template. So that's that. I will catch you guys once this is fully deployed and we're ready to go. All right, Linux 2 is finally fully deployed and ready to go. Now we can go ahead and actually power it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the power, the play button and get this party started with the VM. And this will allow us to get everything rolled out and we'll be able to see what it looks like when it's operational. So it should get an IP address through DHCP and all that good stuff that goes along with it. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna launch the web console and give that a couple of seconds to log in. 
and it should be able to go ahead and boot up from its opera from its powered off state. All right, so we're going to go ahead and log in with our password and we should be able to get an IP address, which we do, which is what we want to have. I'm actually going to right click here on the terminal and I'll do a quick IF config and I have an IP address of 10.1.1, 10.1.3.133. I go back over here to this guy and I click on Linux 1. This guy's got 1.32. So if I come back over here and I ping 10.1.3.132, guess what? I can ping it, which is what I want to be able to do. So that means that everything that I've needed to do up to this point is working the way that I want to, which is awesome. So that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Not a whole lot more to the process than that. With that being said, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me in this video, and until next time, guys, take it easy.